Minecraft have released a world edit add-on on the Minecraft marketplace. It is called World Builder Add-on and it's created by Orville Studios. They have priced this add-on at 990 Minecraft coins. That's £4.99. It's roughly $6. So far, the Minecraft community has given this a 4.6 star rating out of 5 with 25 ratings so far. 80% of those are a five star. Now on Minecraft Bedrock Edition on Windows, we have the editor mode, but it was never released on any other versions of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So this might well be the best alternative. Yes, we do have commands and structure blocks, but I think this is going to be easier to use. Once you have this installed in a new or pre-existing world, you will be given the World Builder Handbook, which explains everything you need to know. Now, when you open this, it is split into different categories. And if you are very new to this, I do highly recommend reading this information. Now, at the top, we have the introduction. And it just explains how to get started. And what this wants you to do is tap on the give toolbox item. And then you tap on this again. And it's going to give you a whole bunch of tools. And I want to start off by explaining the basics behind these before we get into the more complex stuff. However, if you're just after the specific category, let's say you wanted to learn about mask or block picker, I will have some timestamps on today's video because this can be incredibly overwhelming, especially if you're new to this. Starting with the basics, the selection wands. Now, this is going to be one of the most important tools throughout this whole entire add-on. I'm on PC, so if I left click, which is a tack, it is going to set up the first position. If I then move a little bit further back and then right click, it's then going to set the second position. Now, there is a cut tool. You might have to open up your inventory and you will see a couple more tools. This simply gives you the ability to cut this. That's simple, really easy to do. You can, in fact, undo this. Now, this tool right here is the copy tool. Really simple. It's copied 165 blocks. We have the paste tool and this updates in real time. And I really, really like how they've done this. So I could move this all the way along. Obviously, this is the exact same block as before. But what I'm going to do here is go up a little bit. And you can see here, if I was to then tap on paste, it's then went ahead and pasted this. I could then do the exact same as many times I want. So let's say I wanted to go up, paste it again, up, paste it again, up, paste it again, and up, paste it again. You can actually undo these. As many times as you want. To be honest, I don't know how far you can go with the undo tool. For me, it just simply said there is nothing left to do. So we're back to square one. And that's the basics behind using the selection tool, the cut tool, and the copy and paste. But let's take the copy and paste to a whole new level. I would like to copy this village's house. So let's start off with the first selection. So I've selected this one right here. Ignore that. What we're then going to do is come to the opposite sides and then right click. Obviously, now the selection over there has disappeared and this one is selected. But we have a slight problem here. And this is a mistake that a lot of people do. I originally placed down a block right here. Well, you don't have to do that because with this tool, air, the air block is classed as an actual block. So I could go up as high as I wanted to here all the way up here. Now, you can see that's a lot of blocks, right? So, we're just going to go back down because we really don't need to have it that high. You can see here, I'm somewhat happy with this. So, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to copy this. I want to move this. So, we can then move this to a slightly... Uh, to the side of this. So, I want to move this over. So, I, I want to kind of make them parallel if I can. So, they kind of look parallel to me. We're going to hit paste. And as you can see, we have, in fact, copied this really really easy to do but if you do make a mistake tap on this and it's gone oh yeah i forgot to mention this you can actually rotate your builds as well so if i was to left click this ignore the previous selected just gonna make sure we have all of this in we're gonna right click here kind of relatively happy about this i'm then gonna click on copy so this has been selected now with the paste tool if you crouch and right click it's then going to say, do you want to flip it, rotate it clockwise, rotate anti-clockwise. I'm going to rotate clockwise 
and then i'm gonna find the exact position as to where i want to post this or place this should i say i'm gonna make sure this is relatively the same height and i'm gonna hit paste and as you can see this has now been pasted but clearly facing a different way there is also a settings tool and if you tap on general you can have it include entities or not by default it will actually be off so if i was to go ahead and put a ton of villages inside of this house which is what we're about to do i'm gonna put all of these inside of here tons and tons of villages hoping that they don't all escape so what we'll do here is i'm gonna place this block in front i'm gonna recopy this build so we're just gonna go left click here all the way over here i'm going to right click i'm gonna check my settings and make sure we did have the entities on they're on that's completely fine that's completely fine i'm gonna copy this i'm then gonna come over to here and we are going to paste this and technically all of the entities should carry over and as you can see they did one thing i will say though is if you copy a build and you have this off and then you turn it on when you're trying to paste it does not update you need to turn this on and then you need to copy the builds or whatever else you want to copy and paste i don't need that we're gonna undo that and i don't need that one well yeah we'll just undo that and you can see here we're back down to the first one the next tool i want to teach you about is the fill tool now this is incredibly helpful for me especially when setting up tutorials like this because i can flatten land in a matter of seconds so start off with your wand left click and then right click as big or as small as you desire now at this point you want to be using the block picker tool you can right click on grass for example you could right click on stone you could even right click on this at this point you then tap on fill and this is going to change all of that selection to a specific material or block so for example we used copper i don't like that so we're going to undo it we're going to go over to say diamonds it's going to pick block this we can then tap on fill and instantly it's now a diamond block after that you can crouch and right click and there are other selections that you can do so we have fill outline wall stack and move mode if i was to go ahead and break my way through here you can see that this is clearly solid right well if we change this which is what we're gonna do we're gonna change this to outline mode if i was to then left click Go all the way over here and right click we then fill this in you will notice that this is hollowed out and this is obviously going to be really good for building bases this could be the foundation for a castle if you wanted to maybe you wanted to keep a corridor on this i could then left click on this right click on this change our tool to the stacking mode if we right click on this again you can change the amount as much as you want let's say i wanted this to be 10 we hit submit you'll see here that this is going to just literally copy this and all the way through it's going to be hollowed out so yeah i really like this tool i'm building a castle and i want to build it out of gold blocks let's mess around with the wall tool so we're gonna left click here i'm then gonna go ahead and right click i'm then gonna tap on this and you can see here it is gold and it's slightly hollowed out and we have two sides to the wall again you're just gonna have to mess around with a whole bunch of these tools in order to understand it let me show you the stacking mode though i would like to stack this house so let's just make the perfect selection to start off with kind of happy about this maybe i'm not i'll move it in just a little bit more there happy with this one we can stack this now you can stack it from one all the way to 64 but there will be a limitation on some of these so let's just do let's just do 10 for example and hit submit you can see here it's went ahead and copied all of the houses if you're a map maker this is going to be brilliant for you one of my favorite tools is the navigation ones just look to where you want to go and it's going to teleport you all the way to that location like instantly though so it's a great way for you to teleport around your well but there is a limitation as to how far you can go because obviously this is going to update chunks very very quickly if you're spamming it 
So hold on. Let me, if I close this, can we, can we kind of like get outside? If we, can we go outside of this? Yeah, you can. So if you're stuck in like a block of this, let's say we were stuck inside of here. So we'll break our way through and you wanted to go up. It's going to put you on top and you go back down though. Can't seem to go down. But yeah, thought this was a really helpful tool. Great for seeing large scale builds. As for the line tool, you right click with this one and basically drag it where you want to. But you can kind of go off center with this one. I currently have the pick block set as air. So if I was to go down to here and then hit this again, it's going to delete the blocks. We're going to hit undo and I'm going to, let's say, pick block this. We're then going to do a line from there all the way over to here. And you can see it's changed the diamonds. I could then go from there. And we can do this in the air as well. This is really good for setting up outlines. But yeah, this is actually really good for creating parkour maps. Just like the other tools, with the line tool, if you crouch and right click, there are many different options. Let's make ourselves a pyramid. In terms of how I want to do it, let's do it with a netherite block. We then want to tap on this. Then obviously you go up and you can decide the size of this. Let's go to... A little bit bigger here. I kind of like the size of that. Tap on it again. It's going to calculate blocks. This could be really good for making yourself a beacon. If you then crouch again, you can change it. Let's say to a sphere. You have to use this specific block. Let's change it to iron. I want to put a sphere, a circle all the way up here. So we're going to tap on here and we're going to make this a little bit bigger. Not too big though. The bigger it is, the laggier it becomes. Once again, it calculates... And just like that, we've made ourselves a sphere. I only just figured this out though, but if you want to bring all the tools back into your toolbox, let's say you had blocks here, you can just crouch and tap. I actually missed that before. Next on our list is going to be patterns and gradients. To get started, you need the block picker tool. Crouch, right click, a new menu is going to open. Let's start with the patterns. Add blocks to a pattern. Tap on this. Then you are then going to tap on each block you would like to add to the specific pattern. It will make like a clicking sound to kind of signify that it has been added. We're then going to use something like the selection ones. We're going to left click and right click. We're then going to use something like the fill tool. And as you can see here, these are the blocks that we previously had. And you can rotate these as many times as you like. A lot of people like to use these when they're building specific terrain. To do this on a bigger scale, once again, we're going to left click over here, come all the way down here and right click, and we're going to use the fill tool. And once again, as you can see, all the blocks that we selected in our pattern have now been added. You can use something like the line tool with this. More importantly, you could use something like a sphere, pyramid, etc. So if we was to then go ahead and tap on this, make this big, tap on this again, if if I'm if I'm correct here, yes, it does have all the blocks included. Same applies for doing gradients. Right click, click on gradients, click on create new. We're just going to do this as stone blocks. Hit submit. This will pop up. We're going to left click and we're going to right click just the selected blocks that we want. We're going to hit submit and we're going to click OK. And as we can see, we have a new gradient. And you can use it or you can, in fact, delete it. Once you've selected your gradient using the selection wand, left click and then right click wherever you want. And then use something such as the fill tool and this will change. I kind of don't like that because there's too much going on there. So we can rotate this until we like the perfect selection. I kind of like that one. So I'm happy. You can make as many as you want. So let's go to gradients. Let's go to create new. We're going to call this all blocks. We're going to hit submit. Left click, right click, click confirm, click OK. And now we have another selection. And then you want to tap on this and use gradient. You can do this on much larger scales. I haven't actually put this to the test at all. But let's try something like this. We'll then use the fill command. And as you can see, we have a giant or wall. And you can then obviously change this if you wanted it to be, let's say, a pyramid. Change this, make this pyramid as big as you wish. 
and then hit submit and this will be made out of ores. I'm still learning the basics behind this, but let me show you how the mask picker works. This basically gives you the ability to replace a specific block with another one. So we're going to start off by tapping on the grass. After that, I'm going to use my block picker and set this as the stone one. Now I'm going to come over to here, left click all the way down here and right click i'm going to use something like the fill tool and as you can see here it's now replaced the previous block with stone related blocks it simply is great for terraforming and i'll try and show you guys a better example here so we'll go like all the way up here and i'll come all the way down to here and we'll fill this again and as you can see any of the dirt blocks have now been replaced with stone. So at this point, I could then tap on this. We're then going to tap on this. I think that might well be right. Let's see. As you guys can see, it's completely replaced it. And this goes on and on and on. Let's say I wanted to replace the leaves on this. I would then right click on this and I want to replace it with... Let's go with diamonds. Why not? We're then going to decide how much of this we would like to replace. We're then going to click on fill. And as you guys can see, the trees have now changed. And you can slowly tap this. That's the cool thing about this, right? You can do this very slowly. And if you start to hit undo, you'll see very, very slowly, it does start to undo what you've previously done. Like I said, with this kind of stuff, the bigger scale you are working on, the laggier this does become. Let's use sand, for example. We want to replace sand. And I would like to replace the sand with, let's say, this uh, log, right? We'll then go to left click. We're going to replace it all the way over to here. So we'll do it down here. We're then going to hit on fill. And anything that was previously sand has now been replaced with logs. Let's mess around with some brushes. In order to access this, you need the settings tool. Crouch and attack. Tap on brushes. Click on create new brush. And you can pick whatever brush you want. Again, they're all the same. They're just different designs. Let's go on to structure brush, for example, hit submit. We are then able to, let's say, copy this. So we're going to left click this. We are going to right click all the way up here. We're going to hit confirm. We're going to use this as house, hit submit. And then we are going to get ourselves the tool. Once we have this in our inventory, you can see here, we now have this tool and you can place this wherever you want. So let's say you want to put this over there. Again, you can see here, you can copy and paste this as many times as you want. So rather than using the ones I showed you at the start of the today's video, you could just go ahead and use this. If you want to change your brush, get the settings tool again. Click on brush. Click on create new. Pick your design. This time we'll go with the sphere. And we're just going to make this a size of five. You can hollow this out if you wanted to. We're going to make this as a solid block and hit submit. You then have the block picker and the mask picker so obviously you can decide what blocks you want to use we're just going to use a diamond block for example hit confirm we're just going to do this as diamond tool hit submit and then this will go inside of your inventory you can then decide where you place this down right so we've got diamond spheres everywhere you can customize these and have many different colors i don't know how far you can go can we reach that once a little bit too far what about that one a little bit too far Change this house. There you go. Absolutely perfect. I've never messed around with the erode tool, but we can make this much bigger. You have the option to erode, lift, fill, melt, or smooth. We're just going to leave this on the basic one. I've set this to stone. So this one can actually have the ability to remove stone, selected stone blocks. Also available inside of your settings is the tools option. This is still new to me, so please bear with me. Let's start with the command tool. We're going to do time add let's do like 1100 for example here hit submit we're just going to do this as time tool this will instantly go inside of here you're then able to change time for example rather than having to do forward slash time change so that's a really simple one and you can set this to any command you want so as it mentions it says here the command tool runs a minecraft command when you use it for example using say hi will print the word hi in chat so you could go ahead and change this let's do to like uh hi for example hit submit that one didn't actually work <laughs> 
Um, let's just do like say hi, for example. There you go. That's much better. Say hi. I mean, you could just be really annoying with this one. Another cool tool is the block replacer tool. If you tap on this, you'll be given the block picker. And then you'll tap on what you would like to replace. So we're going to replace the uh grass with let's say emeralds we're then going to hit confirm we're just going to do this as the replacer hit submit and then we have this and then whenever we tap on grass for example as you can see here it replaces it and you can hold this down as well so i like this one you can kind of pinpoint what you wanted to do really good for tutorial builds the cycler tool will let you cycle and change some of the blocks that you previously changed so as you can see here we're just cycling through the ones that we've already selected in the past. This one I'm still learning as well, but you can see it's starting to change them here. So you can just hold these down. I think if you were to use like a gradient, then obviously you could replace these individually. I think this is very similar to the previous tool I've already showed you though. The only tool I couldn't figure out how to use was the stacker. But besides that, I hope this video has helped you out. If people really enjoyed today's video and would like to see some more in-depth tutorials, then maybe I'll add some more and go into more about masking and the specific tools and how you can use them a little bit more. If you did enjoy today's video, please be sure to hit that like button. This add-on definitely gets a thumbs up from me.